Minimizing operator exposure. Fluoroscopy represents a large portion of radiation dose to the operator in diagnostic imaging due to the continuous x-ray production and real-time image output. Most exposures during live fluoro are relatively low at between 1 and 3 MA, but this is simply the tube current applied and does not take into account the amount of time the fluoroscope is on, which is directly proportional to the dose received. We can still think of MA relating to the quantity of radiation produced by the equipment, but the exposure time is going to vary per procedure, and that can result in minutes or even hours of fluoro, depending on the type of use. Typically the phrase, having a lead foot, means someone drives really fast because their foot is pressing down farther than usual on the gas pedal, implying their foot is heavy or that they can't control it somehow. The same analogy can be applied to physicians using fluoroscopy. As you know, a dead man switch is always used as a safety precaution in case something were to happen to the operator and the x-ray machine is still exposing. A good practice for limiting exposure is the utilization of intermittent fluoroscopy. If the radiologist is examining a patient's stomach full of barium that isn't emptying, they likely won't stand on the exposure switch for the entire time it takes for the stomach to begin emptying. They may choose to periodically expose for a fraction of a second to check if contrast has begun its travel into the duodenum. Once it has, the dynamic portion of the exam may continue, but it is unnecessary radiation to the patient and the operator when there is no functional purpose for viewing the image. There is an audible alarm that sounds after every five minutes of exposure time designed to make the operator aware of the accumulated dose. I can recall a few occasions in my career when a surgeon or a radiologist had been operating the exposure switch for fluoroscopy, and I noticed that they continued to stand on the switch emitting live fluoro when they weren't even watching the monitor. We called this having a lead foot. It's a technologist's responsibility to remind them, politely, that the x-ray is on. Sure, that may be annoying to them after a few reminders, but if it does start to rub on their nerves, that's when I always offer to take control of the exposure switch. Eventually, they will either adjust their practice and be more mindful of this, or they'll trust the technologist to assist in this area. There is no diagnostic use for fluoroscopy when the image is not being observed, and there's plenty of reason to advocate for ALARA principles. One feature that greatly reduces dose from 50 to 80 percent, according to your textbook, is last image hold. This occurs when live fluoroscopy ends and the last frame of live fluoroscopy remains displayed on the monitor. In addition, pulsed fluoroscopy can significantly reduce patient dose. In real-time fluoroscopy, the fluoroscope is producing x-rays as long as the exposure switch is being held down, and with pulsed fluoro, the operator can reduce the frame rates that x-rays are on in pulses. When used in conjunction with digital image memory, a continuous image can be projected on the display with far less radiation exposure. The pulses are synchronized with the power supply feeding the x-ray generator, which in the United States is 60 Hz. Frame rates, such as 30 frames per second, as used with common televisions, can be utilized instead of live fluoro to reduce exposure, and there are options with even fewer frame rates as well.